Jen Galina, aka Airplane Jane, started her career in February 2015 and has taken the day trading community by storm. As a loving wife and mother of two, Jen has Jen was seeking control of her financial future while rem remaining present for her young daughters. As a day trader, Jane has been able to accomplish that dream, quickly becoming one of the most successful female day traders under mentor Timothy Sykes. Through her blog, YouTube videos and seminars, Jane hopes to inspire and empower more individuals to break out of their comfort zone and try day trading. So welcome on board, Jane. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Yeah. So maybe you can start off by telling us, first of all, what led you into trading? Well, really what happened to me, I had been a value trader. Um, growing up, my parents had done long term investing, like buy and hold 15, 20 years. So I would learned a little bit of the value of companies and the fundamentals of them, looking at the price to earning ratios, what dividends they would be paying out and how they would grow over a long term range. But then I was pregnant with my first daughter back in 2014 and I got laid off from my job. And so I had to figure out, okay, well, now I've got a baby on the way. I need to figure out how I'm going to be able to work and provide for my daughter as also being an immigrant from the U.S. into Canada. And I needed to figure out what I was going to do. So I, you know, my husband had reminded me of a great trade that I'd had before where I'd taken 25000 and turned it into 250000 and so I thought, you know what? That's a great idea. I need to look back at trading because I love it. I love numbers. Um, and so I thought, let me go ahead and start studying this. But I really want to be more hands on day to day. I didn't want to be passive buy and hold for years. So I started looking into it. And that's how I found Timothy Sykes online and started studying his tools, which helped me a lot in the beginning because I didn't know where to go. I didn't see a lot of people out there um, and when you start researching and you google penny stocks he's the first person that shows up he's everywhere he's got a great marketing presence and so i started studying and uh, but his way of trading did not mesh with me like it just it wasn't the best for me and so i had to go and continue further and, and figure out my own strategy what was going to work the best for myself um and so that took a little bit of time it took some paper trading after blowing up a six thousand dollar account with a six month old and not following the rules and then going back and really studying hardcore and getting into it watching the market day to day and paper trading and figuring out what was going to work for me you know studying the market really and studying what was going on and studying the price action, studying the times of day. How was it going to, you know, how is 930 different than 1 p.m. in the market? What's going on? And really taking the time to learn the market. So that's a little bit of how I got into it. <laughs> okay, so you can say that being fired was sort of like a blessing then, but you didn't see it. For uh, sure. It was definitely a blessing in disguise. So like, I, I want to go back to like how you started out initially and also, you know, even coming to the point of you writing a book and hitting these milestones in your career under a very short time. So I don't know if it's because of your learning uh, or the fact that you had a mentor, but you still made it possible to custom make whatever you were taught and make it your own how did you go about the learning process to make you get to where you are right now for sure well I think you know everybody just as we all have different fingerprints we all will have a different fingerprint strategy so the way that you might trade a stock is going to be different than the way that I trade a stock because our risk tolerances are going to be different. The amount of time that we have to watch a stock might be different. And the, you know, our understanding of the market might be completely different. Um, the tools that we use might be completely different. So that's where it really came to me figuring out what I was comfortable with and going from there and saying, okay, well, I started watching stocks that were gapping down 
And at the time I was only trading in an account that I could only go long. So I was really watching the stocks for a bounce and a reversal and trading that reversal. So becoming aware of watching the price action, watching the level two, you know, feeling the tension in the stock when it was gonna reverse, seeing, like I said earlier too, like the time of day, about every 30 minutes, you start to see little changes in the market as well. So really taking the time to understand what was going on with the market, as opposed to necessarily following somebody else's strategy. Because when you follow, you're always gonna be late, right? Because you're, you're not understanding necessarily the reasons behind getting into it and making that decision for yourself. You're just a sheep at that point and you really have to take the bull by the horns and understand why, map out the trade, map out the risks, map out the entry, the exits. Know when you're going to exit before you even get it. Mm. And, you know, like with price action, you, you really have to watch the markets and train your eyes, you know, and, and be more of, you know, taking a step back and watching the markets. So did you know what you were doing or did like your mentor take you through the steps first? And then from there, now you started building on to your trading process. Well, I definitely used uh, Timothy Sykes tools of his videos and talking about, I didn't know what level two was when I first started because I looked more at just level one information, just the basic open close from the day prior, excuse me, what the 52 week high, 52 week low was. So I wasn't immersed in the actual price action day to day, minute by minute, like I am now, where I can see what's going on. I can see where the bid and the ask are um, because I didn't even understand the concept of how important volume was when I first got into it, which is huge. And so learning those steps and definitions and tools to get the right basis to start off on the right foot and then figure out what worked for me after studying with my mentor really helped. Mm, I like that. Um, and now coming to the point where you, you know, you paper traded for some time when you were still mothering your, your child, how long did that take uh, before you got the confidence to go live? For sure. Well, I, I was able to put her into daycare at 12 months old. And so I, really began paper trading, uh, say September of 2015. And then after a good two months, felt confident with my strategy. And then I started going with very small amounts of money just to get that difference of paper trading to real money. And then as my consistency grew, then I would slowly position larger and larger uh, because if you're going to be paper trading and you're not consistent and you're not making profits, why put your real money to it? Uh, so that's what I did as far as slowly positioning and sizing up. Okay. And Jane, you're the author of FMJ Trust Transition Trade, a book. I, I read a, you know, a brief part of your book and it features women traders. Why was it important for you to interview and write about the success stories of women in, in the trading industry? And maybe whose story can you relate with the most from your book? Well, with the book, basically, it was a book that I created as something that I wanted when I was starting out to trade. So there are a lot of male traders that are out there that are really in the public eye that have training tools and everything like that. But I didn't know of many female traders, especially day traders that were out there to help others learn how to day trade. Uh, and so I wanted to go ahead and reach out to other female traders that were open about helping other women and getting into it. And so I said, you know, I really would love to share your story, your pitfalls, what happened, how you got into it, how long you've been doing it so that other people could learn from that as well, because I think we can shorten the learning curve by learning from others and 
I really had enjoyed two books, Market Wizards, as well as Momo Traders, but they were all about men. And I thought, well, you know, there's nothing about women out there. And it'd be really cool to go ahead and create this for other women so that they can learn from others as well and see that it's possible. You know, I think there's a lot of women traders that are not necessarily in the market because they don't even think that it's something that they could do because they think, oh, men do it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And there's one, uh, Linda Rashke is featured in Market Wizards. So, but there, you know, yeah, you're right. Very few women are, you know, in the yeah. industry and known for their work. So that's, that's, that's something good that you did for, you know, the industry, I would suggest. So can you tell us if you have like a trading philosophy for the years that you've been trading, like your belief about the markets and how they operate? Well, now, you know, with all of the computers trading in the markets, I feel like it's very, very manipulated. Um, and I'm also partnering with Stephanie Cameron and I've been working with her over the past couple months, almost a year now. And it's so true that you can see that the large players in the market will hide their trades, yet you can see what's going on in the market by following them. And you can see, okay, there's all these big trades that are happening. Somebody knows something, so why not follow the big guys? And really follow the volume because if you are, all the candlesticks and price action are derived from volume and basic supply and demand. And if you can follow that volume, you're going to be more successful because you're following the price action, you're following the trend, everything like that. So it's really about being on the right side of the trade. And if you're not, get out. And when you say the big guys, who are you talking about? You know, for the people well, who are new into trading. Sure, for sure. I mean, most of the U.S. market is driven by a couple of, you know, I'd say a handful of five big banks. And then you also have hedge fund managers. So many of these people are typically long biased, meaning buy it low and expect it to go up and sell it. There are some hedge funds and money managers that will be short biased, meaning you could sell it high and buy it back low and make the profit in the middle. But for the most part, all these people manage money and it's going into the market somewhere, right? So they're going to be buying a very big position because they have a lot of money that they're managing. And we are talking about billions of dollars, not just a couple of thousand or millions of dollars. So being able to follow that big amount of money is going to help you profit because you're able to ride on their coattails and you can ride it on the way up. And then if you see them selling it, okay, hey, I'm getting a signal. It's time for me to go ahead and close this position and take profit and I'll move on to the next one and jump on their back on that one and ride it up as well. Okay. And would you equate volume to liquidity in the markets? Oh, for sure. I mean, volume has everything to do with liquidity because if there's a large amount of volume being traded, then there's going to be an easy entry and easy exit. If you're in something that's only going to trade a thousand shares a day and you buy a thousand shares, well, you're going to have a hard time getting the optimal exit or entry. Yeah. So you narrowed down, I don't know how you started out, but you finally decided on day trading as your choice of, you know, trade, trading style. So is that like a reflection of your personality or how, how did you settle, come to the point where you decided to be a day trader? Well, I think for me, it was being more hands on and after studying the market, loving the market and seeing the price action and enjoying being in it. However, now I've actually even sort of changed a little bit and become more of a swing trader because I've seen the analysis that there's more money to actually be made in swing trading than in day trading. As far as you tend to have a larger gap, so it's easier to make money on those gaps if the signals say that you should get into it. Um, but 
just like with everything, there is risk and there's no guarantees on returns. So it could go the opposite direction. And being able to get in and out of a trade, but getting out when it's against you is the most important. Mm -hmm. And maybe I should have asked this at the beginning, like what markets do you trade? Um, I trade primarily the U.S. markets. Uh, I, I can I do trade some foreign equities in the U.S. market, but I don't trade any other exchanges. So I'm just typically now I'm done usually by about 1030 in the morning Eastern Standard Time. Um, and then the rest of the day to get other things done, uh, working on projects like the new trading room that's called the training pit uh, with Stephanie where we're actually teaching traders that know zero knowledge. Uh, and it's great because we're going to have a handful of people in there so you can get tips and tools from different people. So you get to learn different points of view. You get to speak with them on a daily basis. And it's really cool to be able to help people change their lives forever, basically. Yeah, and, and being able to sharpen your knowledge uh while teaching others because you learn more as you teach, I think. Exactly. It hold, you hold yourself more accountable when you're in the presence of, or when you're in front of other people. Yeah, and I spoke to Stephanie earlier this year. She's a very cool woman. I'm sure you, 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 there's a reason as to why you blend. Yes. Gel. She actually was in my book as well. She was one of the traders in my book and actually reaching out to her online has, it, we just connected and we have a lot of the same philosophy of helping people, being very positive about it. And just overall, the more that you can help others and lift each other up, the better it is for everybody. Okay. And so like when it comes to now the technical side of trading, how do you like deal with drawdowns and how do you manage your risk so that you don't, you, you preserve your capital? For sure. Well, with risk management, like I said, it's very important uh, to go ahead. Like today I had a $5 loss. I was trading TVIX and it went, uh, you know, it went down just about a couple cents but and it, it dropped down further and then i saw that it bounced back up and i went ahead and i go went ahead and i cut it but it's also you know being able to know that if you cut your losses you're going to be able to continue on right if you don't cut your losses you're likely going to blow up your account and you have to create that good habit of getting out when it's not with you and there's always going to be another opportunity. That's the beauty of the market is there's always opportunities. There's enough money in it for everybody to prosper. And having that mindset that you didn't miss out, but you're going to wait for the next good one. Mm. And so like, how do you evaluate at the end of the day or at the end of the week, how do you evaluate your trades and what would you classify as good trades and what would you classify as bad trades? Well, at the end of the day, you know, I would look at obviously at my P&L. Uh, I'm not over trading. You know, as I've gone forward, the initial excitement of it in the beginning, I would over trade a bit. And now it's more reserved to finding that optimal trade, waiting for the signals to get in. Um, and a good trade could be one like today where I took a $5 loss. I didn't take a $200 or $300 loss. I went ahead, I said, hey, I see that this is hitting, it's hitting a point of resistance. Uh, TVIX, if you don't know, is basically the fear index, three times velocity. And it's always, it's a decaying instrument. So it will always be going down in price. But when the market drops, that will go up three times as fast. So it looked like today the market was going to just go ahead and fade away, but it didn't. And so I said, hey, all right, the signals were there. It looked like it was going to be good, but you know what? It didn't. So I'm going to get out. And it was a good trade because I went ahead and got out before. Now it would be about a $50 loss instead of $5. Mm. And, and how, do you have like any memorable trade that you would say you, since you started trading to date, whether it was, you know, 
on the good side or, or if you lost money, do you have that one trade that you still remember and what lessons did you draw from that trade? For sure. Well, I remember, uh, I'd say back in 2016 and I was doing really, really well and I was, you know, I was on a real good roll. And as I don't know if you've spoken with Mandy Poroff Sanjani, you should definitely speak with her. But I, I was having the superhero feelings at the moment, like I can do no wrong. Everything is great. And so I'd, I'd been following my pattern and everything. And I was trying to go ahead and do a reversal trade on a stock that had gapped down. And at the time it was ticker baby. And I'd gotten into the position and I was also trying to teach someone at the same time. And basically I ended up with a position that I was holding on to. I was bag holding it. It didn't reverse. Um, and then I held on to it for about a week. And then I finally accepted the loss. I cut the position. And sure enough, a week later, I would have been in a nice profit, but I took a, a sizable loss on it. And it now it sticks with me that, you know what, just go ahead and move forward because if you're in a position and it's not going with you, just get out. There's going to be more opportunities. It's going to be, you're not going to dwell on it. Um, you know, I'd held this one for a week and I was day trading. So holding it was not a good thing to do. It was don't hold when it's against you, hold it when it's going with you um, and keep those profits coming in. And as I like to say, carpe profit, go ahead and protect the profits. If it's a stop to go ahead and protect your profit and lock in a profit, why not do it? You know, the more greens that you have going in, the more your account's gonna grow. If you have small losses, then those small losses will likely be less than the big gains and the small gains because there's four outcomes, right? There's a big gain, a small gain, a small loss, and a big loss. So if you can get rid of those big losses, more than likely your account is going to continue to grow because you're just eliminating that big negative. So just keep the positives coming. Yeah, and as a day trader, when you hold that position for that long, then you you risk the overnight uh, risk as a day trader, and you know that adds more injury to your trading account. For sure, and then you can't necessarily sleep well because you're thinking about it and going, "Oh my goodness, what is this going to do? What's happening overnight? Is there going to be news that comes out?" Mm. So if people wanted to like join the trading pit, the project you have with Stephanie, how would they go about that? And how can people uh, find you and your work and your book? You yeah, know? everything. Well, I'm, I'm pretty much out there all over social media. If you were to Google Airplane Jane, you will find a couple pages about me. But if you go to cjanetrade.com, you can find all of my social media areas. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube as well. I do a weekly video. Um, and as far as getting into the training pit, you can email me at jane at darkpools.com. Or you can also click through. It's also on my website under the training trading room. So you can just go right there under the main menu. Okay. Uh, you will send me the links to all those uh, platforms and then I will put them on the show notes. Now, as we wind up, I don't want to keep you for long because of your voice. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay, unless it's hard for you to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, what, like, which book would you best recommend for people who've been trading under five years? Uh, yeah, which book would you recommend? Well, actually, right on my website, I actually have a list of recommended books, and I also have them in my book as well. I have a, a compilation of books as well that are recommended, but of course I would recommend my book, um, but I would also recommend Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, uh, as well as The Trading Coach. Um, those are two great books that I would highly recommend for people just getting started in the industry. The Trading Coach by Brian Steinberger. Yes, and he's an amazing individual. I had the pleasure of meeting him at Trade Ideas Trading Summit last year. Uh -huh. And 
he is an amazing person and very, very helpful in helping other people with their trading psychology. Yeah, he's very giving. I spoke to him sometime in May this year. Yes. Yeah. You'll give me the recommendation to Mandy, your friend. Yes, yes. If you if you haven't spoken with her, you definitely should. Okay. Thanks for your time, Jane. Um, I'll let you go back to your business. I will speak to you again in Perfect. the future.